Good morning. I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful day today and enjoying the weather. Uh, uh, Saturday is absolutely beautiful. I have no idea what tomorrow is going to be in store for us. And uh, those of you who are, are, aren't aware, we're actually having to record these now on Saturday. We load them up and I awkwardly sit on the couch with my family and my Bible and I watch myself preach and uh, participate with the service and talk with you guys. I hope you are here today and present. And uh, I want you to comment if you have a YouTube membership or you're logged into YouTube and say hello. Let us know you're here and uh, tell us uh, what's going on. Say hello and uh, I'll comment back or my wife or many of the other people are. And I appreciate it. We've had a, a lot of uh, good results from this over the last few weeks. And thank you, Brother Aaron, for uh, dedicating your time to uh, spending one-on-one -on -one time with me every Saturday for the last few weeks. And hopefully... As we continue to pray and see God's hand uh, continue to work, uh, we'll be seeing the downside of the COVID-19 and uh, we'll be uh, reunited back together in service here very soon. But until then, uh, we're going to keep uh, loving one another, encouraging, praying for one another. I always want to hear your prayer requests. I want to pray with you guys. I definitely miss our Wednesday night prayer meetings where we talk about uh, blessings God has given us and prayer requests and what's going on and missionary letters. I got a stack of missionary letters uh, to read. And, and sometimes if you're wondering, why don't you read them online? Uh, well, to protect some of our missionaries because some of them don't want them made public like that. Uh, we're just going to wait till we get back and we'll ha have lots of letters for the first few Wednesday nights back. But I uh, hope you enjoyed your donuts. And uh, if you didn't get any, just message us. We did run uh, Duncan run out of donuts to give us the one day so we'll get more but uh, sometimes we're just missing addresses and uh, things like that but we think we got everybody i'm delivering a few more today and probably a few more on monday uh, just to make sure uh, we get the donuts and i have a public service announcement here it is men children next week is mother's day there is no getting away from it you may not use any excuse you may not use that there's a pandemic and every single store is closed you may not use the fact that there is no restaurants to take them to uh, they will not take this you need to be ready to step up your game and uh, be prepared and uh, i miss not being able to uh, purchase flowers for all you ladies this year and giving you candy and uh, I know some of you will be hitting me up for candy as soon as you get back and be like, where's my candy bar? And we got so many birthdays uh, coming up. And we just saw uh, Easton just had a birthday the other day. And, and these kids are getting so fast. And we miss you all so much. And uh, looking forward to it. So that's it for, for announcements. And uh, uh, Mother's Day is next week. Uh, there's no excuse. You could order something from um, order local. Don't order Amazon. You might not get it for like two to three weeks. You never know right now. But order quickly. Make your plans. Uh, plan to take the kids out for a long walk and, and let mama take a nap at least. Uh, do the dishes. Make it a whole week of Mother's Day. You're like, hey, honey, you're not going to have to do dishes at all this week. Uh, I'm going to do the homeschooling for the. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way I'm teaching my kids this week. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, help them out and uh, start doing things as you can And because Mother's Day is coming. Let's pray, and uh, then we'll get started with today's service. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for being such a good father. Lord, we thank you for the ability to come together, uh, even during this time, Lord, as we are away from one another, to still uh, search your word, Lord, to have a closer relationship with you. Father, we look forward to the day where you bring us back together and our 
uh, house of worship, Lord, where we can praise your name, where we can pray together, Lord, where we can sing songs of your goodness. Father, help us during this time to continue to reach out, to continue to uh, encourage one another, continue to love one another. Father, we're grateful for every one of our teachers that has continued to uh, call their classrooms, send letters to their kids and activity sheets and stickers, Lord, and then put videos out there to help the kids make sure they can connect to a Sunday school lesson. Lord, we're grateful for the youth leaders making videos and trying. Father, we ask that we would continue to seek you personally during this time. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm actually going to scoot over here and grab my water. I'm thirsty today. And uh, probably it's the pizza I had. I don't know. But let's see. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right. That went good. That went good. You know, <clears throat> our slogan for this year was gather, grow, and glorify. And though right now we cannot gather as we're used to, we there is no excuse for the church still not to be growing in Christ and glorifying Christ during this time. This week, we're going to be taking a step back. A little, uh, a little easier, if you might say. I won't be, uh, you know, hitting the pulpit or anything like that. We're going to be in Psalms chapter 23, uh, one of the most famous psalms in all of the psalms, uh, probably one of the most famous Old Testament passages. Most people know it very, very well. Uh, you hear it quoted in, in many, 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 many movies, and especially uh, at the funeral side or anything else like that. When there's a passing away, you'll hear them quote uh, this psalm. But hopefully, uh, we'll, we're going to read here uh, the entire chapter. And don't get nervous on me. It's only six verses. So here we go. Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we just got done reading this passage of Scripture, Lord, we just ask that uh, the announcements are done, Lord, and we move so fast now with our services, Father, that, uh, Lord, for the next 18 minutes, that people would just focus on the Word of God. Father, that I would be able to encourage them in their relationship with you, Father. They would continue to realize the goodness of you, Father, and realize the, the beauty and the necessity of this passage. Lord, we love you. We ask you to bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we are, and uh, the first point is the Lord is my shepherd. I wanted to break this down, and we're going to do it more, uh, definitely more expository, uh, a verse by uh, word by word, and we'll study on it. And the is, and no, I'm just kidding, uh, the Lord is my shepherd is the first phrase we're going to look at. And uh, I was wanting to continue Joseph because I always love the story of Joseph, but God pressed on me and said, Let, you need to talk about this and understand this passage better. And many of you have probably taught on this, had Sunday school lessons on this, have heard sermons on this, have maybe even preached it yourself, which is good. Uh, you can reach out to me and correct me later on, or uh, you can uh, encourage and you know when to say amen. The first thing we're going to say right here is, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, that phrase right there. Uh, first of all, I'm going to look at Hebrews 13, verse 20. Hebrews 13, verse 20, and I didn't put this on the screen for you. Uh, so you're going to need to turn to your Bibles if you have your Bibles, and hopefully you are still uh, you know who your Bible is and you're still using it. But Hebrews 13, verse 20 is a verse that talks about the Lord being our shepherd. It says this in Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting comfort. The first thing I want to make sure that we realize is the Lord refers to Jesus Christ. The Lord is Jesus Christ. He is our shepherd. And 1 Peter 5, 4 says, And when the chief shepherd, capital shepherd, shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not 
away. Uh, I want us to realize that Jesus Christ is the shepherd. And being a shepherd is not an easy thing. Being a shepherd is not easy, and I forgot to do it. I was going to go back to the children's wing. They actually had shepherd staffs back there, and I completely just forgot about it. But uh, it is remarkable that the Lord himself would choose to be called a shepherd. Uh, in any other society, in almost all societies except for Israel, a, being a shepherd is the lowest, the lowest level of employment, basically. It was a... a task that people didn't want. It was something that people uh, would reject. It was something that when Joseph showed up with his brothers in the land of uh, Egypt and they went to Pharaoh, he would say, tell them that you're not a shepherd. Uh, he made these nice political words. And, and what do his brothers do? We're shepherds. And, and it was beneath the Egyptians to be a shepherd. And it was so below that they said, listen, there's good land over here in Goshen. You go ahead and go live over there, but don't live over here with us because we don't want you shepherds with us, truly. Uh, shepherds was considered low. Um, if you've never been around sheep before, and some of you have raised sheep, and, and you know uh, what it's like to be be a shepherd or, or to lead a flock, I've never raised sheep personally. I did help a farmer one time uh, give them all their shots as well as shear them, and uh, let me just say, they're, they're really dumb, okay? They always say sheep are dumb. Uh, they're dumb and smart at the same time. Um, but you realize that being a shepherd was considered low, which is why we're always amazed that the first people uh, God informed that Jesus was born was the shepherds watching their flock at night. Uh, and it was such a low uh, job. It was vo viewed very low. But yet this is the position that God chooses to refer to himself. He constantly refers to himself as the shepherd, the great shepherd, the uh, the first shepherd. And he realized that being a shepherd uh, is because of the animals many times. Now, um, I watched a lot of videos. Uh, the one, the best video I watched was the sheep that was uh, wandered for four years in Australia, and they found him, and, and he was just covered uh, with about that much wool on every single side of him to the point where if he got any worse, he could have died. Uh, being a shepherd has to care for their animals and uh, they have to make sure they have fresh food. They have to be brave and willing to protect. They have to lead. They have to give instructions. And over time, a sheep trusts the shepherd as they get to know him. Uh, David knew this in a personal sense, which is why he said, my shepherd, which we'll get to soon. It, it is just that uh, being the Lord for others in the theatrical, sorry, theater, <laughs> cannot speak right now. Uh, being a shepherd in many ways is almost a low task, but yet is needed. And God refers to us as sheep that have gone astray. And uh, God refers to himself, Christ refers to himself as the great shepherd. And the first one you realize that the Lord is my shepherd. Now we're going to look at this next passage, this next word. We're only going to be actually in verse one today. Uh, I actually thought like, man, I'm going to go uh, deep here. We're going to go longer. We're, we're going to get into this. But I, as I was studying verse by verse and looking at this, I realized verse one is very important. First of all, the position God took to be willing to be called a shepherd. But then the ownership that David took in using the word my. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Think about that word. Uh, it gives a sense of belonging. It gives a sense uh, of uh, that we need to submit to something. Uh, sheep are social animals, and yet, uh, sadly, there's. Uh, they say when I was listening to some of the commentaries, there's no hierarchy in sheep. They just follow and they wander and they follow and wander. And uh, some of you have shared the video, and I appreciate every time you do of that sheep that's somehow fallen into the hole. And it says, this is Christ trying to deal with me as a sheep. And the shepherd has to pull him out of the hole and he comes out all mud and covered. Uh, this is what Jesus is speaking in, in the book of John. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeteth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth. Because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so now I the Father and I lay down my life 
for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore do with my father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Last verse here. No man taketh it away from me, but I lay it down on my, of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my Father. We're going to look uh, to realize that Jesus Christ is the shepherd, and, and that you cannot be part and cannot even think of calling God the Father or Christ the shepherd of your life until you have accepted what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. You have to be willing to accept that Jesus Christ died on the cross, that he laid his life down, that he went down as a willing sacrifice, that he was buried in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day he rose again, and that by doing this, by the act of obedience, he can forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He can, as the Bible says, purge you with hyssop, wash you white as snow. And as you realize that this is what God and Christ wants to do, uh, when you accept what Christ has done for you, then and only then... Can you use the word, my shepherd? Until then, he's just a shepherd. But until you've accepted and you've gone into his fold and become part of his flock, you, you cannot personally refer to the Lord as your shepherd. He's just another shepherd to you. So the first thing is, is to have that sense of belonging, to have that sense of, of a community, to have that sense of being a part of a flock. That means you have to accept what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. You have to accept salvation. You have to accept that God is in control, that God has a plan, and that you trust him as the great shepherd. Um, here it is. Uh, David felt that he needed a shepherd. And when you think about the fact that we need a shepherd in Matthew chapter 5, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And when you be, put yourself, not down, but when you realize how much you need Christ, you realize that you are broken, you are poor in spirit without Christ, you are, start searching for the good shepherd. You start searching for the great shepherd. And, and you realize uh, this, that the Lord is my shepherd. I'm going to read a quote from Spurgeon. It says, before a man can truly say the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd, he must first feel himself to be a sheep by nature. For he cannot know God is his shepherd unless he feels in himself that he has the nature of a sheep. He must relate to a sheep in its foolishness, its dependency, and its warped nature of its will. Now, those of you that have raised sheep or raised animals, they're stupid. I don't know how else to say. They're just so dumb sometimes, and yet so smart at the same time. Uh, you, we need to be willing to humble ourselves to become sheep to Christ. God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to listen for your voice in my life. I'm going to listen to you as a shepherd to direct me, to move me, to protect me. And, and in this passage, you read it. Oh, wait a second. It's not just to. It's to make sure my needs are met. It's to make sure I have peace in my life. It's to restore me. It's to lead me in the right direction. It's to uh, protect me in darkness and, and, and times of scared and everything else. And to realize, uh, you're right, if you look at that passage, thy rod and thy staff, they protect me. Uh, realize that means instruction and correction is protection. And, and you're like, I don't like that because I don't like being corrected. I don't like being instructed. But yet your kids... Every psychologist would say this, that when kids have a schedule and a routine and they know the guidelines for what is needed in the home, kids thrive because just like that, sheep and animals, people, we need to know what we're supposed to be doing, what we shouldn't be doing, and being corrected. And, and when you do, all of a sudden you say, the Lord is my shepherd. Christians, I have to ask, is God still your shepherd? What is your shepherd today? Uh, when you think about it, uh, is it, is it media? Is it the news? Is it the politics? Is it your friends? Is it the peer pressure around you? Is it your family? Is it your spouse? Is it your wife? Is it your husband? Is it your kids? And all that's good and holy, parents, stop letting kids run your life. Okay? My son said something the other day, and he quickly learned that mommy and daddy are still in charge when he said, that's my tablet. And we said, excuse me? There is nothing in this house that you own that we will not take away from you. 
Okay. Uh, you say you're a mean parent. It's okay. I know it. Uh, and and I'll, I'll pay for it probably in bills later on, but it'll be all right. Cause right now we have to show him that we're leading and directing and encouraging, and improving. Uh, you need to submit yourself as a sheep. God, God, I'm willing to submit. I'm willing to follow. I'm willing to be directed by you. I want you God to be my shepherd. Now, if you're wondering, this sounds really familiar because in a way, we struggle with this over and over again, and, and we want to be like goats off wandering the mountainside instead, uh, but we're supposed to be like sheep, and, and it's very, very similar to a saying, thou art the potter, I am the clay, uh, he created me to be his workmanship, I should let him work on me, uh, he is the husbandman, and I am the vi, I'm supposed to, he's going to cut me and work on me, wait a sec, it's over and over again, Christ and the Bible telling us that we need to submit to him. Christians, we have got to keep doing this. And, and, and when you finally submit to the shepherd, when you can finally say, he's my shepherd, he's my God, he's my king, he's my savior, he's my Lord, he's my master, he's my father who art in heaven. It, it, it becomes personal because uh, you, you have a sense of belonging and let me tell you, you, you do belong because you have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You have been bought and, and purchased with a price that is far above anything here on earth with the very love of God on a cross. And when you finally can say the Lord is my shepherd and you have him in the right place and you are in your place following his direction, the next part comes so naturally. I shall not want. Meaning I, I don't want anything else. I'm not looking for anything else. I'm not interested in anything else. Uh, this is what I want. And, and this is what happens a lot when we uh, kind of partially submit. I, I, the only thing I could think of to really talk about this was a, uh, uh, I originally thought of a meme, but I didn't want to insult people where the guy and girl are walking and all of a sudden he looks back and he's like, whoa. Uh, but some of you get that, some of you don't. This is it, the restaurant analogy. If when you go to a restaurant, you're not sure what to order and you kind of order something in your safety uh safety area and you know what i'm talking about you have your safety foods like oh i'm just gonna order this because i think i know it's a burger and a burger is a burger you know i can't go wrong there and i'm just uh, i sit there and i'm like you know this place better be known for the burgers if you're gonna spend that much money for a burger at a restaurant okay it better be like a burger joint but uh or <clears throat> uh, let's see here i wrote some harsh comments here okay so you order your food next thing you know you're listening to the room setting and you can tell the guy behind you or beside you or across you knows what they're doing this is before social distancing. We didn't have to sit six feet away from everyone. You could hear the people around you all the time. And you're in the restaurant. Remember those days inside the restaurant? And you're ordering. You can hear the person. You know this guy. He loves this restaurant. He's here all the time. He brings his friends here. All he talks about is how good this restaurant is. And no, it's not Crackles Roger. And he talks about the restaurant. He helps his people figure out the best thing to order. And you order your food. And your food comes out. You got the burger. And for whatever reason, Karen over here orders a salad at a restaurant and pays ten fifty four for a salad at a restaurant for goodness sakes karen go to the grocery store and get a bag of salad for two dollars quit wasting everyone's time with a salad at a restaurant as your main entree it's a side it's not a oh my goodness people don't order salads at a restaurant with me i'll just look at you like why is that all you're eating at a restaurant uh but uh she's over there ordering her salad and you sit down and all of a sudden here they come the guy next to you orders food, and you're sitting there thinking, my goodness, I should have ordered what they had. Let's say they ordered the fajitas, and here they come out in the big cast iron skillets, and they're still sizzling. You can smell the steak and the chicken cooking. There's the onions in there and sautéed, and, and, and there's the hot tortillas over here still wrapped in the foil in the, in the little container, and they lift it up in the steam, and you're just like, I want that instead. And the problem is, is when we don't make God our shepherd, when we're saying that is my shepherd and I trust him and I look into him and you fully submit to him and, and you know his voice and you hear him and you're following him, you're always going to be wanting and wandering away from him. You're always going to be looking over here thinking that the grass is greener and, and that's better. And in the restaurant sakes, it is better. Uh, but here's the problem. We shouldn't want when we're fully surrendered to. Christ is all I need. And, and, and I, I wish 
my brain would let me get off some certain things. Maybe it's the ADD in me that I just get so focused on some things that it just sticks with me. But I keep going back to Philippians when Paul is saying, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And nothing else in this world makes any sense to me besides living for Christ. And if I die in Christ, that's a gain. Because all, everything I have, everything that's good, everything that's right in my life is Christ. And, and, and everything that makes sense is Christ. And why would I ever want to stray from Christ? And I remember what it was like before Christ, and that doesn't want to, it's just something I don't want to go back to. Why would I ever get away from following the shepherd? Uh, I want nothing else than to be in Christ and in Christ alone. Christ is all I pursue. He's all I want. He's all I desire, and, and that's all I'm looking for. And, and on our Christian lives, I have to ask, are you still wanting, and if you are, are you truly submitting? Because when the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. Here's my final thoughts for the day. I could keep going on that. I wrote a bunch of other thoughts down here. Let's go ahead and do that because I already wrote them down. There we go. Why would you want to stray away from Christ when he's the bread of life, he's the everlasting water, and he, he never has to sleep. He never has to rest. He is God the Father. Uh, I shall not want means all my needs are supplied by the Lord. I shall not want means I have decided to not desire more than what God, my shepherd, gives. And whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Also in Philippians, in case you're wondering. Here's the closing thoughts. One, is he Lord in your life? Is he Lord in your life? Two, have you found your position as a sheep? Are you a sheep? Uh, we used to sing a, a, an obnoxious children's song, and some of you are going to be like, I'm just a sheep. Bah, bah. And, and we used to sing that with the kids' ministry because uh, we need to behave and submit ourselves like a sheep to follow God. Do you allow him to shepherd you? Do you allow him to be a shepherd? Do you allow him to lead and guide and protect and, and prove let me tell you, he's already done all that. And last thing, are you looking outside of him? Are you looking for things outside of God to try to meet your needs? And many times the reason why we look outside is because we don't want to submit ourselves to him. I think the word is pride. I know the word's pride. That's why we don't want to submit. Christians, it's a short message. It's a simple message. And I didn't want to go. There's so much here just in this. The Lord is my shepherd. I hope when you read that verse, you can say that with authority because you have submitted yourself to him. That you can say that with, with heart and depth because it is true to you. And the lastly, I hope you can say that last part of that verse, I shall not want. Because as you've submitted yourself to Christ, you realize that all your wants and desires are met in him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you to bless us. Lord, we ask you to be with Christians, Lord, all across our area, uh, those of our church that are watching this, Lord, that they would realize that you are the good shepherd, Father, that we need to uh, make you our shepherd, Lord, that we need to know our place, Lord, that we are sheep, Father, that you love us, that you would leave the 99 and come down just for one. Father, that you uh, care for us so much, that you stand in the doorway, that you protect us, that you uh, call after us. Father, help us to realize the love that you have for us. Father, help us to uh, know you as our shepherd, Father, and that we would find our fulfillment in you. Father, so that in the end we can say, I shall not want. Father, help us to realize that we can have all of our needs met in you alone. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you're here and you heard the gospel today and you were uh, listening about uh, knowing Christ and you want to know how to make sure he is your shepherd so you can use that personal word, my shepherd, I want you to message me or call me or, or call the church and, and you can find us, but we just want to get in contact with you so that we can help you better understand what it is to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I love you, church. Miss you. I hope to see you guys very, very soon. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.